All right, folks, let's get started. Let me give you a quick overview um, of what we are going to discuss today. Uh, as we see that some of the guys are joining. Uh, first of all, good evening and thank you all for taking the time out to join this session. I can assure you that this is going to be of a great value to you in your life, in your career. And I'm sure you will, uh, when you uh, when you go back from this session, you will have a lot of things to uh, take away with you. Uh, this is a precursor or uh, like primer to our MPD course that we do on PEA. This is not, I mean, we have done it uh, on a few occasions before. Uh, you will get an overview of the course that we have done and probably it will be a uh, factor in deciding whether you should do this, the five-day course uh, on MPD, which will actually enable you to start your career in that uh, direction. So uh, that is the whole idea of uh, uh, basically giving you an overview. So today we are going to discuss about uh, managed pressure drilling, underbalanced drilling, and tomorrow we'll discuss about directional drilling. So these are all drilling techniques that have been used by industry as the so-called specialized methods to uh, enable uh, drilling in complex areas, enable drilling in challenging areas, or achieve drillability. A number of objectives are there uh, that can be achieved using these techniques or the conventional techniques. So uh, the, today, um, in just a little bit about me, I was, I've been working for the industry for more than 20 years. Uh, I've worked with oil companies, with service providers, uh, and have been involved in training. Uh, and now recently, uh, we are developing a technology for deep water drilling. It's pretty exciting. Uh, and the technology is, as it gets shaped, and there is a lot of information available in uh, public domain. So. Uh, uh let's get get started uh i'm sharing my screen with the presentation you guys can see the screen uh just type or unmute yourself and let me know yes uh, if you can see my screen okay great now uh so today we will uh, what we will do today is we will introduce uh the group uh, to manage pressure drilling we will just I have a quick look at what is the difference between conventional drilling, managed pressure drilling, and underbalanced drilling. These things are uh, sometimes confusing. So uh, it's important to have a differentiation between the three. And uh, then we will talk about pressures that we usually have in the well bore. Some of you would have studied in different, of any, you know, your different courses, but uh, well bore pressures are uh, something that uh, is important for you guys to know. Uh, you know, what are the pressures that we have in our well that we can control, pressures that we cannot control. Uh, then we will talk about uh, what are the variants of MPD, what comes under MPD, I mean, how do we classify MPD? Uh, because there are many things and uh, industry or companies try to code or label them as MPD. So in order to distinguish this, in order for you guys to identify, yes, this is managed pressure drilling, really, we will try to you know, identify that because uh, sometimes people put uh, certain other techniques, certain other methods in, in the MPD uh, scenario. So to avoid any confusion, we will do that. And then we will uh, talk about hydraulics, procedures, and dynamic well control. These, uh, these three points, these last three points that uh, I'm uh, referring to are, uh, by no means today we will have a chance to cover them in details but uh, we will uh, give you an introduction to these and uh, the course that we are doing or we have done before, uh, I think three times before, three, three batches before, uh, we have done, we have discussed the hydraulics in detail. So you will you typically know the hydraulics as conventional hydraulics and how hydraulic changes when you are bringing in MPD. So you learn about conventional hydraulics. In case you already know about it, then you get to know about hydraulics uh, with managed pressure relief. Really. Uh, what about about procedures? Now you have drilling procedures. We know about drilling procedures, so we'll talk about conventional drilling procedures and how these procedures change when you uh, apply MPD on any particular uh, drilling operations. So these are some of the some of the points that uh, that we will uh, we will uh, basically get an overview of this today, and we will also talk about uh, basically well control. So well control is a very important aspect, as you guys know, uh, in drilling. And uh, certain things change when we apply uh, managed pressure drilling. So for those who already know about well control, uh, this will be beneficial uh, to know uh, how MPD, uh, you know, uh, will uh, make a difference in the well control. 
for those who don't know anything about well control or perhaps not been not have that much of exposure uh, they will know well control with conventional drilling they will know well control with mpd so uh, in general uh, the course uh, that we have been presenting uh, in the last several months covers a whole lot of uh, detailed topics uh, that will definitely benefit you in your career if you are doing your project if you are doing your final year uh, you know uh, thesis or if you intend to join a service provider a lot of new service providers have come now uh, in the in the picture so they need a lot of engineers field engineers uh, to go out and do the job so this knowledge is of great help to you so i look forward to discussing all these things with you and uh, thank you once again for joining and uh, let's get started so what is mpd uh, mpd basically uh, defined i so, so when uh, mpd was developed uh, back in uh, 2000, you know, early 2000, uh, there was no definition and people were trying out a whole lot of things and it actually became, uh, it actually evolved from UBD when they thought that well, there is a value and merit in drilling wells uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, overbalanced pressure. Because prior to that, there was only UBD and we will go to UBD in a minute, but the prior to that, there was underbalanced drilling where people would drill with mud that is lighter than the formation pressure that is heavier, that can generate hydrostatic pressure that is lower than the mud pit. Uh, uh, lower than the formation pressure, so that then that 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 would allow you enable you to flow the well when you are uh, while you are drilling. The conventional wisdom and the conventional drilling, as most of you would know, uh, teaches us that your mud hydrostatic should be higher than the formation pressure. But in underbalanced drilling, what we do is the exact opposite. We design a mud that is uh, having a hydrostatic pressure that is lower than uh, the formation pressure. So you allow allow the well to flow. So why do we need to do that? We need to do that for reservoir characterization. We need to see if the well has any potential to flow. And it, but it requires a lot of process change. It requires a lot of risk assessment. So uh, it cannot be done on each and every well. And not every uh, oil company adopts it. Uh, but there is a lot of work uh, that we have done. I have done all over the world. Uh, so it is in use. But uh, so as the technique evolved, IADC thought that they should put a definition to it and a committee was formed for under managed pressure drilling. And they uh, came up with this definition that I have here on the screen uh, where it says an uh, MPD is an adopted drilling process, uh, which uh, you know is used to precisely control the annular pressure profile throughout the well board. The objectives are to ascertain the downward pressure environment limits and uh, to manage annular hydraulic pressure profile accordingly. So, uh, basically, the, what the definition says is how different MPD is from UBD. <clears throat> now, it is important for you guys to know this definition because if you are going to uh, use MPD in any way in your work, uh, it would be useful uh, to quote this definition. Uh, if you are doing a project or if you are trying to write a, a report or program, it's important to quote this and just say, at the end that, you know, basically the objective of MPD is to avoid continuous influx of formation fluid to surface and any influx that is incidental uh, to the operations will be safely contained using an appropriate process. So you are not uh, going to flow the well as you do in the case of UBD or as you do in the case of any well control operation. What you're going to do in MPD is uh, to avoid any influx. And if you do get an influx, then you are going to contain it using a uh, engineer process. So this is how typically uh, MPD is defined. Uh, and uh, to make it uh, more easier to follow, so what happens in conventional drilling, if you see here, uh, uh, I would, uh, conventional drilling is, uh, is basically a combination of uh, hydrostatic pressure and friction pressure. Whereas what uh, the bottom hole pressure is a combination of hydrostatic pressure and friction pressure. Whereas what you have here is uh, to change the bottom hole pressure, you can either change the hydrostatic pressure or the friction pressure. And we will discuss this a little bit, uh, but this is all a, a subject of hydraulics and uh, how you do the hydraulics and all. If you are already worked as a drilling engineer, you would know, uh, but not if not, then we do cover that in detail in our course. And uh, today also we will discuss, try to discuss that a little bit if time permits. But, uh, uh, but, uh, but typically it is a combination of hydrostatic pressure and friction pressure. Now, uh, what happens in MPD uh, is you have a two, three, uh, three, uh, another function here. You have the hydrostatic pressure, you have the friction pressure, but you also have surface pressure. So you have these three parameters that you have 
uh, in your uh, arsenal or in your in your uh, you know portfolio to to control bottom hole circulating pressure. BHCP is uh, bottom hole circulating pressure. So the pressure that is at the bottom of your well while you're circulating is bottom hole circulating pressure. Uh, so it gives you additional tools to uh, to control uh, your bottom hole pressure and uh, you can manage your pressure more effectively. So, so if you see here, uh, you have conventional drilling and then you have MPD and you have UPD. In, in this diagram, uh, you see here now uh, to give you by now this is depth versus pressure. This is your pore pressure and fracture gradient uh, curve. Uh, this pore pressure, and fracture, this, this is how typically drilling engineers start the planning of their wells. So with this pore pressure and fracture gradient curve, they design their mud weight. Now, what, what this red line over here on your left side is your mud weight. Uh, and uh, you see here when the mud weight is static, that is just that you that is when you're not circulating, mud weight will exert only hydrostatic pressure. It will not have any friction pressure. So uh, static pressure and dynamic pressure uh, are used. Uh, basically, uh, the dynamic pressure is when you're circulating. And these are the two pressures that you normally you calculate while by doing your hydraulic simulations or hydraulic modeling. So what you see in this picture here is in conventional drilling, you have, you've got your static mud weight. Now, when you start circulating, if you, you notice here, your pressure has exceeded your fracture gradient. And therefore, uh, therefore what a uh, fracture gradient. And uh, you may end up encountering losses in some parts of the well. So this is highly undesirable. And uh, here is a case where you have a narrow margin between the two, and therefore uh, you have uh, you have controlled this very well. So what we have done here in the next next window or the next graph, you see the static mud weight is planned to be lower uh, or at the core pressure. So when you are dynamic, uh, you are you can see here with MPD you will you will have. Uh, uh, the option to plan your static mud weight because you you are you are able to apply surface back pressure. So you apply you have your so you, you when when you're circulating your pressure is still within this window and you are not exceeding the fracture pressure and that way you can safely carry out your operations and not encounter any losses. So this is the idea. This is the philosophy of MPD. Uh, and then if you see on the on the right side you have a window which says. Uh, uh, that you have uh, in underbalance drilling your static as well as dynamic uh, pressure is uh, uh, basically lower than your pore pressure. Uh, in this case, you are drilling under balance. You are always getting an influx from the well, and you have equipment on the surface to uh, receive uh, the formation fluids, to separate them, and to distribute them. So in under balance drilling, you may get production from the well while you are drilling, and that production has to be handled at surface. So you have uh, multiphase fluid, uh, you get uh, your formation fluid, it could be oil, it could be gas, you have your mud, drilling mud, it could be nitrogen uh, or aerated mud, or nitrified mud. So all of this has to be handled at surface. It's a fairly complex process and uh, uh, needs to be contained, you know, very, uh, very with, with all the methods uh, that we will discuss. So let's uh, move forward. So what, uh, so what is the what is the difference and why are we using the two? Uh, what what do we do? You know why do we use MPD? Why do we use uh, UBD? When do we use them? So in UBD, uh, the hydrostatic pressure of fluid is intentionally designed to be lower. In MPD, the hydrostatic pressure of the fluid is designed to be at balance or marginally over balance. So this is the difference. Uh, just keep this in mind when you whenever you come across you, you know, when you are, are either already working or if you plan to work, you will come across. Uh, suddenly, the management or somebody from your team decides to go with UBD, MPD, then it should be, uh, you know, clearly spelled out as to what we plan to do. And uh, from the application point of view, uh, you have your UBD that is used for reservoir enhancement. You have your MPD that has a drilling optimization, that is for drilling optimization. So, uh, it's, it says here reservoir enhancement, and, and I think in the previous uh, uh, previous discussion, uh, one of 
the colleagues asked, one of the participants asked, what do you mean by reservoir enhancement? That is a good question. It is typically reservoir characterization and prevent reservoir formation damage. You know? So if you're not drilling with the heavier mud, as some of you would already know who have studied mud engineering or studied drilling operations, that uh, this heavier mud uh, causes formation damage uh, in the near well more area. So it takes some time to clear that formation damage uh, by using stimulation and you know, perforation and so many other things. So UBD typically, uh, since you're not using a heavy mud, it can prevent formation damage. So uh, it's not really enhancement to that extent. It is a uh, reservoir characterization and uh, you know, prevents any formation damage or skin uh, is what is the objective of reservoir uh, for UBD. <clears throat> and the use of MPD is for drilling optimization. Uh, basically. So this is the difference. So you enable reliability, you get a higher ROP, you prevent losses, you detect kicks, you know, in advance, uh, micro kicks, so you can prevent a big uh, influx from coming into well. So many such things are used, uh, you know, so many such things uh, are are applied when you use MPD. So now here you have a, a, so what are we trying to manage? Uh, the term is managed pressure drilling. So what are we trying to to manage what are the pressures that we are trying to manage uh here are the three pressures the big now you see on your right side on your screen uh there is a plot uh, which is uh, which says uh, it's, it's, it's a pressure profile or pressure gradient now you have your pore pressure your fractured gradient and your overburden gradient now these three lines here on uh, on the plot they are your pore pressure lines the the one on the right side are fracture gradient and the, the one uh, is vertical stress SV is also your overburden gradient, you know, and fracture gradient is uh, uh, the minimum stress, you know. And uh, why there are three? Because you typically when you do geomechanical studies and when you do some uh, analysis, they come up with these three values for you to plan. And uh, these are the pressures that we have from Mother Nature. These are the pressures that we get uh, from uh, uh, the formation. So we cannot manage these pressures. As you can see, we cannot control these pressures. This is something that we have. This is something that we have to live with. And we have to live with the uncertainty associated with that. And that is why we need MPD. You know? So now what do we do? Uh, there are two other pressures that are generated by us. Uh, and the two pressures are hydrostatic pressure and friction pressure. Now these are the pressures that we can control, uh, basically. Now if you see here on your right side, this is a typical well bore. And the hydrostatic pressure is the pressure created by the column of fluid, as we have been discussing in the well. Uh, and uh, as you circulate, as you initiate circulation, then it, this generates, uh, the, the, as, as the fluid passes through the drill pipe and through the annulus, it generates friction. So that friction also uh, has a pressure. Now, these two pressure act on your bottom of the well, and therefore they're important for us. And uh, this is how we control. Uh, the, the, these are the two pressures that we can control. How we can control these two pressures? Hydrostatic pressure we can control by changing the uh, fluid density. Uh, friction pressure we can control by changing the circulating rate. Uh, so these are the, this is the way we can handle these two pressures. Is there any problem? I just saw a message saying that uh, one of the participants is not able to hear. Uh, I can see uh, that uh, my mic is working. Okay, but I think the rest of the people are able to hear. Okay, let's uh, let's see what, when we talk about. Okay, thank you, thank you for confirming this. Uh, now well, let's talk about drilling window. Uh, drilling window is uh, something that uh, is used uh, commonly uh, in our uh, industry and uh, across all the disciplines: uh, reservoir uh, engineering, geologics, geoscience, and all of them, and so on. So. Uh, here you have a basic schematic representation of drilling window. Uh, now you, what you have is your, again, fracture pressure, formation pressure. And this is your, on the, the green line over here is your bottom of circulating pressure. 
Now, why this is zigzag and why this is wavy is because when uh, when you uh, uh, switch off your pumps, uh, you lose your friction pressure, you lose this component, so you only have hydrostatic pressure. So you lose certain pressure from your well uh, while you are static when your pumps are off, when you're making connections or taking surveys or pulling, tripping out of hole. So this each uh, low event represents a connection. Uh, now here in this uh, particular case, uh, we have a large ceiling window. Uh, so large ceiling window means uh, you, uh, you have a sufficient margin between the fracture pressure and the formation pressure. So there is no problem when your pumps go off. You're still, your pressure is still more than formation pressure. And this is what the scenario used to be in the olden days uh, when conventional drilling was used and everybody was uh, using conventional methods. But these kind of prospects are no longer uh, available. And what we have now is um, uh, a profile like this. More and more people are able to see a profile like this, in which case, uh, uh, in which case we uh, we have very narrow margin between the formation pressure and fracture gradient. And this narrow margin means uh, when you switch off your pumps, you uh, you 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 your pressure drops below your formation pressure. And as the pressure drops below the formation pressure, uh, you might get an influx or a kick, or you might experience wellbore instability. So uh, wellbore instability is a term that you, you all might be familiar with, but uh, in, in simple terms, the well starts to, well, well wall, the open hole, well bore walls start to collapse in the well in the form of cavings when the mud reacts with them. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, this is how uh, uh, it might, uh, uh, <clears throat> affect your uh, your well when you have a narrow margin. So just to give you an idea, when you are talking to experts or when you're talking to geoscientists, they might say we have a very small drilling window, we have a narrow drilling window, uh, therefore we might have a kick, we might have a loss, we might have elbow instability. And so this is precisely what this presentation is what it is. So when you start drilling, you might experience some issues because of the narrow window. And uh, here you have, you know, uh, what is uh, the now here, the, uh, the, the same graph that you saw before, uh, where you have three scenarios, three cases. Uh, this adds up to the uncertainty uh, and uh, creates uh, more uh, issues when designing your mud system, you know. Uh, now, when we're talking about uncertainty, uh, if you see here, you might notice that uh, at a particular depth, let's say 2,500 meters on this plot, uh, you will see that uh, uh, basically you have uh, three values of pore pressure. So your uh, high value is 12.8, uh, your low value is 12.8 ppg, your high value is 15 ppg. So this has been generated using a scientific method called geomechanical studies. Now this is what you have uh, in a new well, uh, so-called uh, exploratory well or uh, uh, appraisal well. Uh, so there is an uncertainty of 2.2 ppg. Uh, uh, again, in the fracture gradient at the same depth, uh, the low case is 17 ppg, the high case is 18 ppg. So the uncertainty is of 1 ppg. So the total uncertainty is 3.2 ppg. So if you plan your mud weight um, uh, with uh, the high case, with the with the high case, and if your mid case is the real case, then you have too much of overbalance. And too much of overbalance can lead to a lot of problems like formation damage. Sometimes they can induce losses. You may have to run a casing soon. If you start with the mid case and your pore pressure happens to be high case, then for sure you're uh, under balance and uh, you don't have uh, the necessary pressure in the well to contain any formation influx. So you could get into trouble because of this. So this uncertainty is what uh, we refer to and then MBDs where you can adjust your pressure from surface and we'll talk about it as we go along. Uh, you can adjust your pressure from the surface and this additional uh, tool that you have can help you. Now, so the goal of FPD is to use closed system uh, to control the pressure profile throughout the well bore uh, and thus eliminate any drilling and well bore instability related issues and uncertainties. That is the goal of the FPD in general. Let's have a quick look at the MPD variants. So what are the MPD variants? The MPD variants are different types of MPDs that are used on different wells. You will hear these terms uh, you know, regularly. One is the return flow control, the other is constant water mole pressure, third is dual gradient, uh, fourth is pressurized mud capital. 
So in uh, return flow control, what you do is you simply divert the flow away from the rig floor to avoid, uh, you know, when you when you close the BOPs uh, and sorry, without closing the BOP and uh, while, you know, you, you can move your pipe, uh, you don't use any surface back pressure or anything. You just use uh, RCD, rotating control device, and you make sure that uh, fluids from the well, gases, oil are not exposed, it's all closed. Sometimes, you know, in an open well, for those who have worked on the rigs, they would notice that uh, if it is an open well bore, fluids just come out, you know. And if you have H2S, if you have any dangerous gases, that creates a very, very hazardous situation. So return flow control is very useful from the HAC point of view, health safety and environment of view. It's completely closed. Now you have your constant bottom of pressure uh, technique uh, where you use uh, surface pressure uh, is applied uh, basically. And uh, then you have your, uh, uh, if, if you have your losses or if you have your gain, then you can, you can manage that uh, basically with the help of adjusting the surface pressure. Then you have your well gradient drilling where you have two fluids in the well to control. And then this is mainly used in deep water when you replace the fluid with the riser, riser or another fluid and your well actually has a different type of fluid. So the well gradient gives you an advantage of using a lighter fluid in the riser, and heavier fluid at the bottom, the well, and thus uh, you manage uh, the pressure in the well by using two fluids. And then there is this pressurized mud cap drilling where you have, uh, you know, you use when you have severe losses in the well, and uh, you don't, uh, uh, you know, get in returns. So use a sacrificial fluid for drilling and then you maintain a cap fluid in the annulus. So between the sacrificial fluid and the cap fluid, you maintain uh, the, uh, the, the cap fluid. Uh, there is an interface between the cap fluid and the sacrificial fluid and the cap fluid actually maintains pressure in the well. And uh, when, when you have highly fractured formations, when you have losses, this is what you use. You know? Uh, this is a typical layout of uh, constant bottom of pressure. And let's go one by one uh, about various hardware or the equipment that is used. So you have your rotating control head, and you have your choke manifolds, you have your Coriolis meter that is used for peak detection, that is a flow meter that gives an indication of uh, any influx from the wells. So if you have gas coming to surface, uh, Coriolis meter is the one that read it. You don't have this in conventional drilling. This is a highly accurate meter that shows you any change in the density, change in the flow rate. If you have losses, uh, you know, then it will detect a reduction in flow rate because you're losing some fluid. If you have gain, then the flow rate will increase. This is what the, the device will detect. So these are some of the main components uh, of uh, MPD. And uh, the RCD is typically mounted on top of your annular preventer. And you use mud gas separator in your process so that uh, uh, if you get some gas in plugs, then you circulate it out using your mud gas separator. Now, what is constant bottom of pressure? This illustration will show you. Uh, here is your uh, uh, you know pressure in the well uh, when your pumps are on. Now, in case if you go under balance, uh, then you might get a kick. What has happened is the pumps are off. Now, the, diet, the, the dotted line here is when your pumps are on. Now, when your pumps are off, you might get a kick because you lost some pressure on the well, the friction pressure. Now, when you apply some surface back pressure, what you essentially did at the time was increase your bottom of pressure. Uh, and thus, you prevented that kick from happening. Uh, this is precisely the, uh, you know, the concept of uh, constant bottom of pressure or applied surface back pressure. Now, uh, this is uh, about kick detection. So how is kick detection enhanced? How did you know that there was a kick? So MPD is some, sometimes used as a tool to detect kicks from a well. And uh, what do we do? Uh, the additional equipment, the process, MPD has been you know, uh, to, uh, uh, a tool that has got an inbuilt key detection system and they provide warning and any influx might uh, be used to control, you know. So here you have your conventional uh, setup and uh, what, what, you, what you get here, what you do is uh, get here is your flow paddle, uh, which is used to monitor, you know, uh, just flow out. Now this paddle detects uh, increase or decrease in the flow and uh, pneumatic or electric signal converts 
uh, basically the the change in the flow into zero to hundred uh, percent flow out. Now this is conventional drilling. This flow patterns are there on all the rigs. You got who, all those who have been on the rig will see a dial gauge, uh, and there is a it will show an increase and decrease in the uh, pressure, increase and decrease in the flow. You know as as you start circulating and the flow comes out and uh, goes through this. Now this is highly inefficient and uh, requires a lot of cleaning. If you have your mud and everything stuck here then uh, uh, this paddle will not move or it will move very little. So this is where a lot of times uh, things get missed out uh, on conventional setup and the accuracy is very low. Similarly, there are other tools uh, which they use like this, this is the pit, pit volume sensors and this is your uh, you know mud, mud balance that checks uh, mud density, but these are all manual process. This is to check your viscosity, but these are all manual process. You need to take the mud from the pit and you know check the density. Whereas uh, the Coriolis meter would typically give you online, you know, real time as the mud is flowing through it, it will constantly check for your mud density and your flow rate. Here it is, you know, how it, here is the measuring principle. So this will uh, essentially give you an idea about uh, whether there is any change in the flow rate or whether there is change in the density and the temperature of the returning fluid. Uh, these are all vital signs that, that were from your experienced eyes can pick up a uh, difference between a kick or ballooning or you know, some other event that is about to happen. But the installation of this device is, uh, is highly critical and very much required. So it improves your loss uh, circulation, enhances kick detection, and continues uh, uh, basically uh, reliable uh, fluid monitoring. So what we essentially monitor is you monitor uh, the difference between flow in and flow out while you are drilling. So we are continuously doing a flow check by monitoring flow out. In conventional drilling, when you stop or when you are drilling circulating, when you check the flow out, it's called as flow check. But here we are doing a flow check all the time. Meaning are we losing into the well? Are we gaining from the well? So you are doing it all the time. And if there's a deviation between flow in and flow out, that is an indication of a particular uh, issue in the well. So this is how uh, it is typically checked. And now let's have a quick look at um, the MPD equipment. Uh, equipment is typically, uh, as we just saw, there's a rotating control. Uh, we just have a, a look at it. Nothing uh, more different Coriolis meter, choke manifold. Rig pump diverter. Now the rig pump diverter, let me give you some background about this. Uh, when you are doing connections or any other uh, operation, then uh, you need uh, you need this manifold has to be uh, basically uh, has to have some flow in it for the choke function. So what the rig pump does essentially is it diverts flow from uh, into the well. Uh, basically, it stops uh, from flowing into the well, but it just diverts it from the choke manifold and then back to the pits. So it, no, the the MPD itself continues to receive flow, and uh, and thus it uses. Uh, the available pump on the rig to for the functioning of the uh, choke manifold. Then what we have is RCD, rotating control head. There's a number of models here that I will show here. You see low pressure to high pressure. Uh, we'll discuss all this during our course, their application and all, but primarily they're classified based on the pressures. As you can see here, uh, they're also classified based on uh, uh, the elements that they use, dual element, single element. And uh, so there is a number of RCDs that are available in the market. And uh, I can see that uh, they are, uh, they can, uh, it's an important uh, selection criteria. When you do your uh, uh, application engineering, you might uh, uh, be needing to decide what type of RCD you want to use. Now here you have your pressure rating, you see your pressure rating, crew pass, uh, bearing assembly without bearing assembly, the height, all these parameters are important, and we will discuss these parameters in details, you know, in our course. But uh, as an engineer, as a drilling engineer, you'd be required to uh, design an RCD and uh, identify the most suitable RCD because there is a cost implication. So let's look at an offshore application. So RCDs uh, have a different um, 
application or different design for offshore and for onshore. The purpose is the same, but because offshore in deep water, in particular deep water, the configuration is different. BOPs are at subsea, and uh, therefore uh, uh, this is how it is, you know, installed on a subsea application. You see here the RCD is below your tension rate, uh, and uh, and then you have your lines going to your uh, choke manifold, basically. And uh, this is just an animation for MPD process. This is how a choke looks like. Uh, if you see uh, physically, the internals and all are, uh, the function of the choke is to maintain constant bottom of pressure during connections. And thus uh, pressure gradient uh, in the well, uh, you, can, you can change by, by moving the internals over here that move and they, they, they give you uh, an option to adjust the pressure. And this is uh, uh, the entire manifold. So you have uh, chokes inside the manifold, but you also have a lot of gate valves in order for you to redirect your flow from either choke one, choke two, or choke three, and so on. And uh, so function of the choke manifold is to increase or decrease pressure from surface. In either in static or circulating mode, and thus maintain constant bottom of pressure. So there are different types of chokes. There are hydraulic chokes, there are electric chokes. The technology has uh, evolved quite a bit. And I encourage you guys to do some research. All those who are, who are in, into this should do some research uh, uh, and identify the chokes that are available in the market. There is a big variation in the size. Earlier, the sizes were limited to three or four inch, but now there are bigger size chokes chokes available. So uh, the size is a critical factor, you know, in this, in when, you, when you're designing MPD and we'll talk about it more, uh, you know, if time permits or if you guys join our course in the future, we will tell you why its size is important. Uh, there is a, a few slides on that, uh, that tell you what type of choke you need to use and how it affects your operations. And then you have this low meter that we just spoke about. Uh, that's the Coriolis meter, and when, physically, this is how it looks like when it is mounted uh, on a, in a manifold. Uh, here is another design, uh, another manufacturer, uh, another uh, you know type of equipment. And uh, this is uh, basically non-return valves. We need to use these uh, valves uh, frequently uh, in any MPD operations. They are usually installed in the drill string. One is installed right above the pit, as you can see here. Uh, uh, this is your pit, and this is your pit sub, and then the valve is right there. And one is higher up in the uh, in the drill string. So what it does is uh, basically it prevents backflow through the drill string while making connections. So when you make connections, and if you are by any chance underbalanced, RCD is taking care of you only for the annulus. What about the drill string? So drill, drill string also needs to be sealed, and this is done using your non-return valve. This is not only used in MPD, but also used in conventional drilling. Okay, let's talk about uh, quickly about the planning process. So MPD, if you're doing it for the first time, needs to be planned ahead of time. You need to do some engineering evaluations to see if MPD is going to benefit you. Uh, an MPD program is prepared by a MPD engineer. Process takes approximately two to three weeks, depending on the complexity of the project. Uh, an MPD engineer is involved in that, who does uh, the engineering, and then a project manager takes up all the uh, process work from there, and then you know assigns the equipment, utilizes the equipment, uh, does all the procedures, and then actually executes the uh, program. So typically, what you would need is uh, you need core pressure fracture gradient that we talk about, spoke about just now. You need wellbore geometry. What is how many casings you are going to use? What are the casing setting depths? What are the sections in which you're going to use MPD? Then you need drilling fluid design uh, like properties of the drilling fluid. Uh, you need a configuration of bottom assembly and drill pipes. Very important information. You need temperature profile. Uh, you need any details from the offset well. And this is the minimum input that you need to start your work on MPD. And then what uh, you also need uh, to do a rig inspection. So the project manager or the MPD engineer, they do go do a re-inspection to see how you're going to set up your equipment on the rig, 
what are the connections available on the rig how you are going to install the rcd the choke manifold the what are the connections for the multi gas separator how many lines you are going to need all of that so rig inspection is very important for the first, if you are going to do a building for the first time and uh, based on that you make a diagram and uh, the diagram is called as pnid a process and instrumentation diagram which typically gives you an idea uh, everybody an idea about how the process is going to be and who uh, and how we are uh, you know going to um, uh, execute mpd so we will study about this in details uh, today because of limited time we we'll, i'm just introducing all these ideas to you but uh, we will see a lot of pnids in the course and we will actually uh, you know dive deep into that subject but there is a pnid that it gives you a number of valves that you are going to use in the process and uh, different uh, other different different other equipment that you use also once all of this is done you carry out a hazard and has of meeting uh, with client with uh, service companies and the drilling contractor uh, and you explain to them on uh, the different risks involved because now you are changing the process the drilling process by introducing additional equipment so there are so many things change when you bring in mpd on that uh, the hazards needs to be analyzed with respect to doing all these changes and the control barriers need to be put in place when you are doing this so this needs to be uh, discussed as well and uh, typically you have project manager mpd engineer mpd operator number of people on the on the rig that uh, will uh, uh, be involved in the execution of mpd to ensure that uh, uh, the job is carried out successfully and all the performance indicators are met uh, and uh, these are some of the rule the reason i'm discussing about this here with you guys is that uh, uh, there is these are the positions that typically experienced people would take assume you know as you go along in any organization you will be working in the office in the well site a combination of two so it opens up a lot of opportunities for you guys if you have some knowledge about the subject of course the hands on training is what you would get when you join a company but preliminary training preliminary experience is highly important you know so in summary uh, basically uh, mpd does these three things uh, improve safety and well control uh, it does help in kick, uh, you know improves kick tolerance and then does helps in ecd management so these are uh, the three critical uh, objectives of uh, using mpd in any well uh, so i guess this was the last slide in this slide deck i have got another slide deck to cover quickly which is on ubd so today's topic if you guys remember was mpd and ubd uh, so now we we just covered just finished uh, with the with mpd uh, we are going to start with ubd and in case if we need to we will uh, continue tomorrow we have got another day uh, where we can combine uh, under balance some of the topics of ubd with directional drilling directional drilling is another interesting topic and i highly encourage you guys to join you know more as well so let me just switch over to another uh, another uh, topic Okay, can you can you see my screen? Uh, which is under balance drilling. Okay, good, good. Thank you. So let's have a quick look at UBD. Now UBD is a somewhat different process. Actually, uh, it, uh, it does get uh, used lo uh, loosely, interchangeably. People sometimes use this term, so it is important to clarify this. Especially engineers uh, need to know. Oh, sorry. So what you have is uh, essentially uh, some of the some of the points are similar. This is this is the diagram that we saw, you know, a uh, little while ago. So I won't repeat that. Uh, but what happens is uh, underbalance reservoir drilling is a different uh, process. So what it does is drilling with hydrostatic head uh, of drilling fluid, which is intentionally designed to be lower than the pressure of formation being drilled. 
Uh, the hydrostatic head of the fluid may naturally be less than formation pressure, or it may be induced. Uh, so you you can be uh, just with a single phase it can be less, or you can induce it. Why? How you induce it by adding nitrogen? You know, the induced state can be created. You see here the third line. Uh, induced state can be created by adding nitrogen, uh, natural gas, nitrogen, or air uh, to the liquid phase. So the liquid phase is your mud. Now, if you need to induce under balance condition, uh, you need to uh, basically use this. Uh, you need to uh, add this, these fluids. Now, here is a basic horizontal well, which shows you two things. One is the air drilling, and one is the underbalance drilling. Now, in underbalance drilling, there is also something what is called as air drilling, where you drill with air. Uh, you don't use nitrogen, but you simply use air drill. Uh, when I say air, we may use air and drilling fluid. We may use uh, uh, we may use uh, <coughs> just air. We may use aerated mud or so on. Uh, you know, foam. Sometimes we use foam is basically a combination of uh, air and surfactant. As you know, you guys use foam for shaving and all. That's the same foam. So that can be used for drilling as well. Uh, again, today we uh, we may just basically introduce these concepts, but uh, we do have a detailed course on this, and we also have a uh, you know way to model it and things like that as to how you use foam and so on. So uh, why do we use air drilling? So air drilling is generally used in surface and intermediate sections. Under balance drilling is used in the reservoir sections, as you can see here in this diagram. Uh, you don't use air drilling here. Why? Because uh, air is a uh, Flammable fluid, I mean, it can cause, uh, uh, what I should say, uh, uh, fire hazard. Whereas in underbalanced drilling, we use, typically use nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen is an inert gas. It doesn't react with the hydrocarbons uh, to cause any flammable mixture. So for those who have been through some safety courses, they would know that uh, presence of oxygen is required for any combustion process. So this is precisely why we don't use air in the reservoir section, because the reservoir section it has got hydrocarbon gases, which is which can act as fuel. Uh, so air is not used in reservoir section. So why do you use air? Uh, they're used uh, in surface section, uh, not to drill reservoir section, as I just said. Their intention, uh, the intention is to solve loss circulation problem and drill faster through hard formations. So if you ask me why we use air here, so sometimes you have very consolidated weak formations here. They can cause mud losses. And if you encounter losses over here, you spend a lot of time curing these losses and a lot of money gets wasted in uh, pumping LCM or uh, setting cement plugs before you, you can continue to drill. Uh, you cannot drill with complete loss circulation or partial loss circulation, so you need to cure losses. So instead, if you use air or a very light fluid, it may not cause any loss. And thus, uh, you will uh, encounter uh, less losses and you can drill faster. Also, if you are drilling hard formations, you can use air and combination of a drill bit called percussion bit. So that can give you higher ROP. So essentially, you need to drill all the sections fast uh, and then reach uh, the reservoir section in order to complete your well sooner. So that's the whole idea of using air in uh, summary. Uh, what is the usage of ABD uh, to improve production to protect your reservoir from formation damage, to eliminate any loss circulation in reservoir, to increase ROP, increase bit performance, and essentially save the cost of the mud or save the drilling time? So these are some of the uh, basically uh, uh, applications of UBD. Air drilling uh, again uh, uh, basically cost uh, related to ROP you now. One of the applications of air drilling is to get higher ROP. ROP is rate of penetration, increase drilling rate. Uh, why? If you encounter hard rock, and sometimes when you're drilling in surface, you get hard rock, uh, then usually uh, the conventional way is to apply higher weight to get ROP. But you do not have enough weight in a very surface of section because your string is very small. So you experience lower ROP. You do not have enough weight because uh, you are at surface. So you end up having excessive drilling time. You have a number of bits. You end up spending a lot of bits. And sometimes you have to come out a hole to change the bit. 
And if you try to apply higher weight, then the well may get deviated. So these are some of the common problems that you have in conventional drilling that air drilling can help you solve. What is the cost related to mud? So, uh, so there is a lot of non-productive time uh, for all of us who have been working on the rigs. We know if you have lost circulation, then you cannot progress in any drilling activity. And thus, uh, you have a LCM, you have, you have to use lost circulation material, you have to set cement plugs. This is a lot of uh, cost. And therefore, you can use air drilling, you can drill with a lighter fluid, and thus uh, you can save some cost on the mud and the lost circulation material. Specific application when you have losses. And then you know in development drilling, sometimes you know a particular section is a trouble section, so you can apply air drilling there. Again, you need water, water consumption is high, and say material consumption is high. So it goes on like that. And uh, for those who have been in uh, cementing and have been, they know the cost of cement plug. So what happens is typically when you uh, decide to apply a cement plug, you have to call in for a cementing company. They will do the design of the cement plug. They will need 12 to 14 hours to mobilize their uh, resources. Uh, and once they come, they set the cement plug, then you have to wait on the plug. I have seen this on my experience and the cementing companies themselves have said, uh, guys, why don't you use it really? I mean, we have been doing it. We, they do two, three, four plugs. They charge because they are called out at the last minute. They come up with the expensive recipe, expensive proposition. Not that they want to do it, but they feel that they need to have these chemicals in order to get a chance of success. Uh, so they then uh, eventually they get tired and they just say that it's not helping because we can only set a small plug. The losses are everywhere, no? in your section. So you go on setting plugs and it takes a lot of time. Imagine if you have set three or four plugs and one of them has to be repeated. So it takes a very long time uh, to go through this. So instead, if you use air drilling, you can go faster and you can drill the section and cement. Longer tripping time and avoid swap and search and all of these uh, related problems. Differential sticking might happen. Again, uh, we'll not dwell too much upon that. But differential sticking is a process where if you're using excessive wall balance and formation pressure is less, then your distilling tends to stick to the wall of the pipe. Uh, wall of the well, and this is uh, because of the excessive pressure and forces on your drill pipe, you can have different sticking in that particular area. So, uh, like we just said, you know, air drilling uses lightweight fluid to ensure that mud column pressure does not exceed the formation pressure, and therefore you don't get losses. Again, uh, uh, light fluid uh, causes reduction of work button pressure of the rock, uh, making rock uh, easier to break. And lighter drilling fluids uh, produce higher ROP. It's a known fact. You can research about this. A lot of work has been carried out, uh, and uh, you will eventually uh, get a lot of uh, data on how lighter fluids can increase ROP. And uh, air drilling can also help in removing cuttings faster because it uses velocity. You get very high velocities uh, in air drilling related for drilling. And you can avoid regrinding. So you take out all the uh, cuttings and they don't remain in the bottom part of the well, essentially subject to regrinding and uh, thus causing lower ROP. You know? And uh, well, in some cases, you've seen ROP is as high as 10 times. It's hard to believe, but it is there. You know, you get higher bit life. So there are so many such things where uh, benefits you get from air drilling. Again, by no means uh, we are going to dress, uh, we are able to discuss this ex extensively today, but uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, points uh, that we would like to cover. So there is so many different types of air drilling. You have mist drilling, you have home drilling, as I said, you have classified crude drilling. Generally, it's just classified like this. And uh, what this is a mist, uh, basically when you start uh, air drilling is what we just discussed all along, but what is mist drilling is when you start to get water production. Some of the shallow formations have water. And if you're drilling with air, you may uh, start to produce water because you're under balance. You know? Then you have to pump a little, you have to add a little bit of water to your air in order to create a mist. And thus it will help in uh, removing that water from the well. And what do you use foam? You use foam because foam has got very high viscosity and it has got very low density. So if you study about foam, foam is used in wide applications in oil and gas. Uh, precisely why? Because it has got a very special typical characteristics and composition. 
a lot of literature is available and people who are working and want to do research on this, I would highly encourage them. Foam is used in drilling, foam is used in production, foam is used in enhanced oil recovery. So many applications of foam in oil and gas industry and all of them are emerging. But the drilling one is established. Uh, when we, it, it consumes less volume of gas. Uh, if you have big sizes of fittings, foam can easily lift them uh, in your circulating uh, media. And therefore, it's uh, of great use, you know. And then gasified fluid is your mud, and then you add some gas to it uh, to lighten it. So you, you use your mud as you would use in any drilling, but you introduce a little bit of air in that, you know, you know to reduce the uh, density. And this chart typically will give you uh, uh, basically density of different fluids. You, you start from your extreme right, where you use your weight fluid, which is called as uh, where you uh, add barite. Most of you would have heard about this. It's uh, more than 12.6 ppg. Uh, then if you have salt saturated water, that is uh, you have uh, brine, it's between 11.8 to 12 ppg. Then you have uh, native clay in water or slightly weight mud, you know, 10.4 to 11 ppg. Then you go, typically water is 8.3 ppg or one hg. If you use oil, uh, it also includes diesel, then it is between 6.9 to 8.3 ppg. Now in this, on your extreme left, you have your irrigated mud, foam, stable foam, mace, and air. Now you, you see how light you can have your fluid in your well. Uh, you can have 4 ppg, you can somewhere between 4 to 6 ppg or 2 to 4 ppg. It's very, very light. Chances of encountering losses is less when you're using drilling with this. What are the limitations? Uh, you cannot use this in unconsolidated formation. You, can, you cannot use it in reactive geopressure formations. You, need, you cannot use in clay stones. You cannot use it in salt sections. You cannot use MWD, LWD. So air drilling is not a solution to all the problems. There are some formations there where you cannot use air drilling. And this is where we have listed them all. Again, uh, we will discuss why we cannot use in these formations when we get into our detailed five-day course. But today it's important, at least it is important for you to know that it cannot be used in certain type of formations, uh, air drilling, uh, either characteristics of the formation or a few other mechanical issues. Uh, for example, you cannot use uh, in where you have hydrocarbons, possibility of hydrocarbons, you cannot use the direction to use. If you have too much of water flow, you cannot use. Uh, as I said, you know, if there's a possibility of hydrocarbons, this can cause downward fires. Air, as all of you would know, some of you would know, is a corrosive uh, uh, fluid. So it can cause corrosion in your drill stream and uh, it can cause, um, so you need to be aware about this fact that uh, your equipment can, uh, you know, degrade faster as compared to conventional mud. And then it can cause erosion as well. And, uh, Sometimes your economics has to be looked at. I mean, because you need, you do mobilize additional equipment, you do mobilize additional people on a rig. So, so this is how it is. Uh, what I also want to do is uh, get to the actual UBD part of it. You know, uh, this will uh, because this this is taking uh, uh, to the process of air drilling. Now here you see here you have your primary compressors, boosters. You have your this is your chart recorder which actually records. The chart records the uh, records your pressure and flow rate. Uh, for air drilling, you need to design your pressure and flow rate uh, in a way that you are able to drill and lift your cuttings. So this is this chart will record. The modeling will give you the flow rate uh, and the pressure required. The chart will record to see if you are indeed achieving that pressure and flow rate. Otherwise, you need to change the changes to your equipment. Uh, so this is how it is, you know. Yeah, this is a bypass wall, this is a gas manifold, this is how you start injecting air into the system and um, to the standpipe, rotating head is required and your, this is your bluey line where uh, you, uh, your, your returns go to your burn pit or waste pit and this should be far away from uh, your rig at least 45 meters you know, as per regulation and this is how it looks like when you do air drilling in your uh, uh, well, this is your the, the burn pit or the waste pit. 
And then you can also use hammers, you know, uh, as percussion tools. This is how it looks like uh, while you're air drilling. They can do much higher ROP than conventional bin. And then you have your mist drilling that we discussed. I'm going to just quickly skip this point because we already discussed about uh, uh, this, you know. Uh, and uh, go to the UBD part that we, we still need to cover, but I'll at least uh, introduce those. Uh, UBD part, because the air drilling is taking up a lot of time here. So, um, load drilling is nothing but a use of, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a form of UBD. Uh, the well, uh, you know, well, under balance drilling, what you do is you use a single uh, phase fluid uh, that is called as flow drilling. So this is the simplest form of uh, UBD. If uh, you want to, if your pressure in the well is high enough, that a single phase fluid, you don't have to use nitrogen, then the method is called as flow drilling. It is essentially UBD, just single phase fluid. It's easier version because you don't need nitrogen, you don't need air, you don't need anything. That's flow drilling. Uh, so. You can have water-based system, oil-based system, other systems. Uh, the addition of glass bits is considered to be very expensive. So you cannot, you, you can use simple uh, oil-based or water-based mud. Uh, that is the least expensive uh, method. Then after that, you have gasified liquid. So what is gasified liquid is where in, in UBD is you use nitrogen. You know, nitrogen is by far the most commonly used gas. And uh, thus it is used in circulation to lighten the fluid. To cause underbalance conditions, you need to, you know, in order to cause underbalance condition, you need to have a very light fluid, and that is done using nitrogen. So, nitrogen, why nitrogen? Because it is uh, inert gas, it, is, it doesn't react with any, any of the formation fluids, it doesn't react with water, it doesn't react with uh, hydrocarbons like gas or oil, and thus it is the most preferred gas. But this is the composition of nitrogen for those uh, who are slightly unfamiliar. Uh, you typically, air contains these all gases, Nitro, most of it is nitrogen. And uh, the other thing is that it doesn't want tend to form gas hydrates are a complex process and uh, it's outside the scope of this discussion. But uh, if you use air, it, it can form hydrates, you know, in uh, low temperature, high pressure environment. So you can have cryogenic nitrogen and you, or you can have on-site nitrogen. Two methods of getting nitrogen uh, for UBD. One is on-site nitrogen where you have a generator or you can use uh, uh, nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, which is supplied by the uh, nitrogen manufacturer. So that's bring, that brings us to the topic of flow modeling. Let me quickly discuss this and perhaps we will discuss this a little bit in more details tomorrow in our tomorrow session, because it is uh, related to UB, uh, direction building as well. So what is flow modeling? What you have is multi-phase multi -phase flow calculations are like, uh, like any other hydraulic calculations. You need to do this modeling to understand how much nitrogen you're going to need, how much uh, drilling fluids you're going to need and so on. And uh, therefore, uh, it's important to do this. A computer, there are computer-based uh, software simulations to put your inputs, all the data, and then it generates different models to give you an idea about how you can achieve underbalance drilling, how you can achieve underbalance conditions. So flow modeling is quite important. Uh, and we'll discuss about that in our main course. Also, if we get time tomorrow, we'll discuss that. Uh, these are all the inputs for flow modeling. As you can see, all the details are required before you start flow modeling. And uh, this is how you get your results. If you see here, your gas, your liquid, your, your liquid gallons per minute, and your gas standard cubic feet per minute. In well A, you need the combination of these two or these two. Uh, what is your bottom one pressure? What is the actual pressure? What is the difference? Uh, barrel per, in you know, your flow and what are the different depths? So you, you generate this kind of uh, results and you, you share it with all the people and you decide on what, which, which approach you are going to use. You know? Okay, so with this, I will pause over here and uh, I will 